If you are a 90s kid, chances are no Halloween season is complete without at least one screening of Hocus Pocus. It was the defining spook film of your youth. It had everything from maniacal witches to a creepy book of spells to a boy who was cursed to spend his entire afterlife inside of a cat. The movie didn't pander and frighten kids with some real-deal consequences while still remaining fun and festive. Looking at it through adult eyes, though, there are a few details that might strike audiences a little differently than before. And we're not just talking about dirty jokes, either. We desire... children. <laughs> hey, that may take me a couple of tries, but I don't think that'd be a problem. Here's what you'll probably only notice about Hocus Pocus as a grown-up. Timeline tinkering. The opening scenes of the movie are set in Salem, specifically on Halloween in 1693. The only problem is that by October 1693, the Salem witch hysteria and resulting witch trials were over. In fact, the last hangings as part of the Salem witch trials were in September 1692. After that, Governor William Phipps, whose wife had recently been accused of witchcraft, dissolved the court that had been hearing cases, released everyone who had not yet stood trial, and forbid the use of spectral evidence to be used in the remaining trials. What this means is that the angry mob and resulting hanging of the Sanderson sisters at the beginning of the film is historically incorrect. We seem to have a skeptic in our midst. Then again, Hocus Pocus came out in 1993, so having the opening scene set in 1692 would have meant the Sanderson sisters were returning 301 years later, and their best song wouldn't have worked. In 300 years, right down to the day, now the witch is back, and there's hell to pay. What a witch. As despicable as all the Sanderson sisters are, Winifred has to be the worst. Look, another glorious morning. Makes me sick. She constantly puts her sisters down, calls them idiots, and even refers to them as her own personal curse. It isn't just the name calling and constant diminishment and smacking of the others either. Winifred also ensures that she gets the best of everything. It's evident at the beginning of the film if you're really looking for it. She implies the potion the sisters are making is all for herself, only later suggesting she'll share it, and her sisters thereby thanking her for her generosity. Oh, Winnie, how generous of thee! Bye bye, bullies. Max may also be the most cruel of his bunch. When Max shows up to save Danny and Binks, he also finds the town bullies trapped in cages. Rather than doing the honorable thing and helping them escape as well, he takes his stolen shoes back and leaves them hanging in their cages. Even though the Sanderson sisters don't end up using what little remains of the life potion on the bullies, once the witches are presumably defeated, no one returns to free them. Even as the credits roll, they're still just hanging around singing, row, row, row your boat. The bullies certainly earned some comeuppance for their terrible treatment of others, but being left to rot in a cage seems a little extreme. The next generation? When Max and Danny find themselves unexpectedly in Allison's family home on Halloween night, we see just how important her family's role is in the town, and possibly how important it has been since the 17th century. Allison's 17th century gown costume is the tip of the iceberg for the costumes at her parents' party. While we don't directly meet any of the attendees, we see them milling about wearing powdered wigs while the women are in similar period attire. Given that we know Allison's family has money, their private party in full 1693 regalia suggests they're the direct descendants of the townspeople responsible for the Salem witch trials in the first place. After all, it isn't the entire town that's dressed as the 17th century upper crust. Just as the people responsible for the Salem witch trials didn't often mix with the commoners, neither do Allison's parents. So it totally makes sense that Allison seems to have some witchy qualities about herself. She sports a red cloak that looks just like the cloaks the Sanderson sisters wear when we see her early in the movie. Even though it's part of her Halloween costume, it seems a little too on the nose. Trick or treat. Allison is also the one who's most drawn to the spell book and comes up with the idea of using a salt circle for protection. What a clever little white witch! Even though she's able to walk through the graveyard just fine, she might just be a good witch, thereby able to walk on hollowed ground. It also explains why the spellbook's eye pops back open at the end of the movie. It was always the Sanderson sisters who were needed to wake the spellbook, so it seems like the book waking up is a clear sign that the witches aren't actually gone. So how does the book wake up? For Allison, of course. She's been drawn to it throughout the whole movie. In other words, the Sanderson sisters are certainly gone, but the end of Hocus Pocus isn't the end of the witches in Salem. Thanks for watching. Bless you. 
click the list icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.